Yep, module four review. So we'll simplify this one exactly. I'm going to show the work on this, although you could use a calculator for it. Um, you know, just in case in the future where you may need to show work on this. So four times the square root of 175. I'm going to break 75 up. 175 up. I'm just going to use uh, uh, any factors that are um, perfect squares. So I, I mean. 175 and 1, that doesn't work. We never want to use 1 in itself. But I, I can see that, um, let's see, uh, it's not, I, I do see it's divisible by 5. That's what I should say here. So that'd be 35 right there. That doesn't really help us because neither of these are perfect squares. I see it's also divisible by 7. How do I know that? Because 35 is. And so that'd be 7 times, let's see, just doing some of this a little bit quickly. You could use a calculator for it, though. That'd be 20, whoops, 25. There we go. And 25 is a perfect square. So this ends up being 4 times the square root. I'm going to rearrange that. So that's 25 times 7. 25 is a perfect square. So yeah, this I'm going to break this up then into 4 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. And that's because the square root of 25 is a perfect square, which is 5. So then I got 4 times 5 times the square root of 7. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So it ends up being 20 times the square root of 7. I still check on my calculator, you know. I mean, can't hurt to check, but uh, 4 times the square root. Uh, 175, enter, yeah, 20 times the square root of 7. So it looks like we did that correct. Uh, again, is that more work than some of you would show? Perhaps. But is it all good work? Yeah, sure, it's good. So we do want the exact answer on this one. I think we've done the square root of 40, but let's do it again. Square root of 40, I'm going to use prime factorization on this one because I used uh, perfect squares on that last one. Yeah, so the square root of 40, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break that up between 4 and 10, just because it ends in 0. 4 breaks up into 2 and 2, which are both prime. 10 breaks up into 2 and 5, both of which are prime. So instead of showing this as a square root of 40, I'm going to show it as the square root of its prime factors, 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And yeah, are there any matching factors in there? Yep, there's a set of 2s that match. Now, there is another 2 here, but it doesn't have anything to match with because I already matched these two. So there's a 2 that matches. It just comes out as an individual 2 from its um, uh, perfect square. So 2 times 5 there is 10. Still in the square root. 2 times the square root of 10. Done. Yeah, so I, I don't think we saw any decimals in the examples we saw for... Um, the Pythagorean theorem, but this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. We're looking for that missing value. That's a leg right there, and we, yeah, we'll round that to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Here's the other leg, 2.1, and then we got this um, hypotenuse, 2.9 right there. So, let's see, did I? Oh, there it is. Yep, the Pythagorean theorem. Didn't have to go back. So we do have one of the legs is 2.1. Uh, we do have the other leg. We just don't know what it is. It's x. And then the hypotenuse we see is 2.9. So we're going to go in. We're going to take the, all the values. We're going to square them. And we're going to take the legs and add those together. That should be the hypotenuse as a square as well. So, yeah, we're going to have to... Well, I'm going to have to use a calculator for some of this stuff. For squaring these decimal values. If you didn't need to, that's great, but I'm going to need to. 2.1 to the power of 2, enter 4.41. 4.41, and then also 2.9 to the power of 2, enter 8.41. I think I know where this is going, but we need to solve for x on this one. And so, yeah, we're solving this equation for x means that I need to zero out, or just isolate my x to the power of 2. So zero out the um, 4.41, so minus 4.41 there. If I do it to one side, i got to do it to the other side. 
and that's going to come out as a nice clean four right there on the right. The 4.41 zeroes out just like we wanted it to. And so we're going to take the x squared this is going to equal four. So what do we do finally? Well, we don't want x to the power of two. We just want uh, x. So square root of both sides and x equals two. So no need to round this one to the nearest thousandth as, uh, as the problem's, or hundredth rather, like this one said. We'll just keep it as two. All right, let's write these as uh, reduced fractions right here. I'm going to start at the top there with four, yeah, a square root of four over 169. 169, we've seen before, that's a perfect square, but remember, if you're doing this by hand, you would square root both the numerator and denominator separately. And we know the square root of four is two. The square root of 169, that's 13. You can put that in the calculator. And of course, the last thing we do on this with this fraction is just, just see if it could be simplified, but it can't. 13 is prime and it's not divisible by two. So what about this one where it's a negative square root of four over 169? Now we know the square root of four over 169 is uh, two over 13, right? But with the negative on the outside, it makes the answer negative, right? Now that's okay, but we can we can compare that with the third fraction, this one. See, now the negative is on the inside. We don't want to see it on the inside of that square root. Of course, if you put it in the calculator, it should tell you that there's some kind of domain error, which means at this point we're looking at a, a value that would not be real. And again, you, you can go into that in more detail in... Uh, it's either 980 or 1010, but for now we're just going to keep it like this. There we go. So there's all three answers right there. Well, what about these types? It's square roots, still. Square root of 121, that's a perfect square, by the way. That's uh, 11. And so if I took the square root of negative 121, well, once again, we notice the negative on the inside, so this one is not real either. And so, yeah, if you put that in the calculator, it would tell you there's some kind of domain error. Is it okay if it's on the outside of the square root? Yes, it is. So this is going to be negative, and we know the square root of 121 is just 11. So negative 11 on this. Now, we did one like this already today, but let's go ahead and do another one. Right? We need to distribute this 0 0.12, and also the, that would be negative 0 0.08 being distributed there a second. And so I'm going to start with uh, negative 0 0.12. That's a 12 hundredths, if you like it that way. So 0 0.12 times x is just 0 0.12x. But then we also have 0 0.12 times 60. I'm just going to do this in the calculator. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I can. So 0 0.12 times, really that's negative 60. I should have I should have shown that as negative 60 because it's minus 60 right there, so times negative 60. Now, I do get negative 7.2, uh, but we would write that as minus 7.2 in the problem, right? Now, I need to distribute the 0 0.08 into the parentheses, and the first part isn't too bad. Let's see if I can get that even bigger, though. There we go. And yeah, I don't really need to worry about negative 0 0.08 times x because it's just negative 0 0.08x. But I do need to put, type in negative 0 0.08 times negative 20. And yeah, we see that comes out as positive 1.6, which means I would write it as plus 1.6 there, All right? So that's the distribution, but now I need, uh, I still have what this equals and that's negative 19.2. Okay, so that, that simplifies the problem fairly well for us. And uh, now we'll just look for anything that we can combine, any like terms to combine at this point. And sure enough, we do have some with the x's. I got this 0.12x and then uh, negative 0.08x. How many x's is that? You could type in 0.12 minus 0.08. Either way, it's going to give you 0 0.04 x's, okay? That's how many x's we have from that combination. And then also negative 7.2 plus 1.6. You can type that in the calculator if you need, but it should be a negative 5.6. And yep, this going back still equals negative 19.2.
Okay, so we, we've taken the big equation, and then after a couple steps, distribution, combining like terms, we have only three terms left, which looks much easier to deal with. Uh, but I, uh, I want to isolate my x's right there. So to both sides, I'm going to zero out that five, negative 5.6 by adding 5.6. Yep, but if I do it to one side, i got to do it to the other side as well. So that's going to zero that out. I will drop my 0.04x. And let's see, what, what does this equal? It would be negative um, 13.6. And yeah, last thing here is to take that negative 13.6 and divide it by the coefficient. Really just dividing by the coefficient on both sides, right? Make that a phantom one, phantom one x, x equals, let's see, negative 340. And of course, you, you could go back in and type this into the calculator. So after checking this on the calculator, it uh, looks like we did this correct. And so negative 340 appears to be the final answer. So on this one, we do, I, I don't see any distribution that's needed like we did on that last problem, but I do see some combining like terms that can take place with these r's like this. So that's 5r minus 5.11r. How many r's is that? You can type that in the calculator, 5 minus 5.11. It's still negative 0 0.11r. 11, negative 11 hundredths. Now we didn't do anything with this plus 8.5, so it stays. And we also didn't do anything with what it equals, negative 11.43. I will now though because I don't want um, I don't want that plus 8.5 there, so I'm going to have to subtract 8.5 from both sides. Okay, so I'm going I will drop the negative uh, zero, 11 hundredths there are. Yeah, the 8.5 zeroed out just like we wanted it to. So this is going to equal negative 11.43. You're just going to minus that by 8.5 in the calculator, it should be negative 19.93. And I just, those of you that are wondering, I'm not necessarily doing this in my head, I'm just 4 plus 5, 11 plus 8, and then drop the 3, because they're both negative. And then, last thing we'd want to do on this one is to divide both sides by the coefficient, negative 11 hundredths. And notice, I'm not dividing it by r here, just the 11 hundredths, negative 11 hundredths. That will leave me with R, which is what I want. R equals, now I will go to the calculator. I can't, I don't really have a shortcut for this one, but negative 19.93 divided by negative 11 hundredths. Oops. Almost forgot the decimal there. Be careful. Uh, 181.18 repeating. Uh, even though the decimal is ugly, I mean it repeats. Uh, on the homework, it should tell you where to simplify. I'm going to simplify this to the nearest hundredth. So where it's a 181.1818, uh, I'm just going to keep it as 18 right there. Uh, oh, and then I'm going to check this. Now, when I, when I put 181.18 in for R, I may get something that's slightly different than 0 0.43 right here, and that's because it was rounded. Okay, so, but I'm going to, I'm going to, put this in the calculator. So on the calculator, just because I rounded it, I got negative 11.4298 or 4,298 ten thousandths, uh, which is pretty close to, to what we got. I mean, it's not exact because of the decimal repeats, but that'll do. So I like these types of equations because they're getting, they're getting a little bit smaller, right, as we go. But yeah, I, I would want to isolate my x's on this one, so I don't want that minus 1.98, so add 1.98 to both sides. Because whatever you do to one side, you should do to the other side. And it's going to zero that out, just like we want. I'm going to drop my 0.6x x's. This equals, let's see, I feel like I should be able to do that in my head, but I can't. So, it's over. Negative 4.38 plus 1.98. Negative 2.4. Easy number to work with, negative 2.4. Now we will divide both sides by the 6 tenths, the coefficient of x, right, to make that a phantom 1x. x equals then 
Let's see, negative 2.4 divided by 0.6. Then the calculator, negative 4. Comes out pretty even right there. It's a very nice answer. But we can still check using the calculator. So yeah, when, the, when we replace x with negative 4 in the calculator in this expression, we do get negative 4.38. So that checks off that x is actually negative 4. A case of four items cost ten fifty-two from the store. What is the price of each item? So each item, right? We're going to know how much each one is. So we're going to take the ten dollars and fifty-two cents. And since we want to know how much each item is from four, we're going to divide it by those four. Okay. This will tell us how much each item is dollars. And yeah, we can just type this into the calculator. Ten. Whoops. 10.25, uh, 52 rather, 10.52 divided by 4. Enter, $2.63. And, you know, if you wanted to check, you could say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply that by 4 and see what I get. Um, yeah, you, you can get the same thing. Bill recently hired a plumber to do some necessary work. On the final bill, Bill was charged a total of $1,408. $400 was listed for parts and the rest for labor. If the hourly rate for labor was $126, um, how many hours of labor was needed to complete the job? All right, well, all right. So I'm going to start with, uh, and again, doesn't matter how you do this one. It's not asking for the equation, although you could use an equation if you chose to do so, okay? Uh, but for me, I just like to kind of walk through this one. So I know the total bill was $1,408. And for me, I would say, well, look, he was charged $400 for just the parts on this, right? So I would take away $400. And what this tells me from this is the amount that Bill uh, paid the plumber in just the labor cost, right? So that would be $1,008. Okay, now we know from what it told us here, that it's $126 every hour. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to take the 108 and divide it by 126. And it's really dollars per hour on this one, which is why this comes out as dollars, which, I mean, we're not going over that today, but you will in, in a later class. So, yeah, 100, and, yeah, it looks like some of you have the answer on this one, but 1,008 divided by 126. Enter, yep, eight hours. So it appears that the plumber worked for eight hours at this rate and with, you know, that uh, charging for the parts as well. A tree needs 1.6 gallons of water every four hours. How much water will be used in a year, which is 365 days? So every four hours, oh, okay, so a, little, a couple different calculations on this one. It's, it, it's given us a measurement in days and then... Uh, the original rate in hours right here. So um, what we got to do is I would look at one day and there is a slight expectation that we know that one day is the same as 24 hours, okay? So for me, the first thing I, I would want to do on this one is to figure out how many gallons are being used or I guess given to this tree every day, right? So I would take my 24 hours and I'd probably, well, for me, I would divide it by four because uh, this will tell me how many four-hour sections there are in the 24 hours. That's going to be six, by the way. 24 divided by four. In fact, I should probably write that different down here. So I'm going to take the 24 hours, and I'm going to divide it by four hours. So this is how many four-hour increments are in 24 hours. That's going to be six. So, in other words, the 6 is now representing, um, it's not being watered, it's just how many, how often the tree needs water. How much water? Well, that's 1.6 gallons, so I'm going to take the 6, I'm going to take those 6 and multiply it by 1.6. This is going to tell me how many gallons of water the tree will need every day. So, 1.6 times 6. Enter 9.6 gallons per day. So I'll put this in GP, not GPD like economics, but gallons per day, okay? So 
That's how many gallons per day uh, the tree is going to need. And this is going to happen for 365 days, which is the same as a year. So I'm going to take the 9.6. That's how many gallons per day. We have 365 of those. Uh, I want to say groups of those. And what do we get? Well, let's see. 9.6 times, going back to the calculator, times 365. Enter. Yep, I got 3,000. 500 four gallons in the year so yeah we'll label this one as well all right for this one we're going to simplify it completely i'm not going to do any of the work by hand because we are able to use calculators although i will show where the work is coming from so i'm going to do 5.6 times 3.4 and yes could you type the whole thing into the calculator you could uh, i just don't think it's necessary on this one nine point Zero 04 plus I, I do want to show some work maybe I'm forcing it but that's 6.8 minus 19.04 so let's go and type that in now 6.8 times uh, minus 19.04 enter and yeah when I combine these I get negative 12 and 24 hundredths well the last thing I would want to do just to check on this one is I, I will now type the whole thing into the calculator, which again you could have done from the beginning, but 6.8 minus 5.6, even with the parentheses, right? Parentheses 3.4, close parentheses, enter. There it is. Same answer we got. Negative 12 and 24 hundredths. All right, order of operations again. Uh, yeah, well, the first thing we need to do is any parentheses. There are none. Okay, then let's go to exponents. There's none of those as well. So we got to go then into multiplication and division and I do have some division here in the beginning well at least in the middle term there so that's 21.6 just go into the calculator divided by 3.6 enter oh it's 6 comes out pretty even right there but then also we have this multiplication right here 8.8 .8 times 7.2 so going back to the calculator 63.36 yeah 36 there it goes. So let's look at our new expression. 4.2 plus 6 plus 63.36. And yeah, I mean, you, you could do this term by term. Like 4.2 plus 6 is 10.2. And then you could add the 63.36. I mean, what is that? 73.56. That seems right to me, but you could check in the calculator. Hey, this one's pretty nice. It's got the power of 2. No problem. And, you know, you could you could just type this into the calculator if you wanted to. If you wanted to show it as 3.14 times 3.14, it's not, it's not going to make a big difference there. But um, let's see what we get from that. 3.14 times 3.14. Enter. Oh, that comes out as 9.8596. Didn't tell us we're round on this one, so I'm just going to keep it as is. Oh, it's only four decimal places. That's not too bad. And in fact, if you just typed in with parentheses 3.14, close parentheses, power of 2, enter, you get the same answer. So yeah, that one's good. Find the area of a circle with a diameter of 25, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Remember, for the area formula, uh, where it needs pi, which it does, we're just going to use 3.14 there. And we'll just use the calculator for that also. Okay, So the area of a circle is pi times the radius. Uh, I think we may have shown that as radius times radius, but we can show it as radius to the power of 2 now since we see some exponents even with um, uh, with some decimals. Okay, And also, yeah, since I'm, I'm changing pi, I'm going to use 3.14 instead. So uh, instead of pi, I'm using 3.14. Okay. In addition to that, uh, I'm going to replace the radius with the radius they gave us. Oh, they didn't give us a radius, but, right? So I'm going to keep the R there for now. It told us the diameter instead. Oh, they almost got me. See that? Diameter is 25. I want the radius instead. So I'm going to take that diameter, 25, and divide it by 2, which is 12.5. It didn't give us any units on it. It kind of surprises me. But, yeah, i got to go to my radius now and replace it with 12.5 okay now I, I guess that didn't fit I'm gonna fix that where that power of 2 is 
Now be careful on this one. Okay, we are not. This is not 12.5 times two, right? That's a that's a power of two. So I have to. I have to take that power of two into account, right? In fact, if I put that in the calculator, 12.5 to the power of two, I get 156.25. That's just from the power of two and the 12.25. It, it gives us that uh, the calculator is 156.25, but I still need to multiply that by 3.14, right? That would tell me the full area. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, uh, 3. Uh, 156.25 times 3.14. And yeah, there is the pi button on the calculator, but I'm not using it. This ends up being 490.625. Yeah, I can just keep that. It didn't, oh, it did say word around in the tenths, right? So yeah, the, the two in the hundredths place value is just going to keep the six in the tenths place value the same. So it ends up being 490.6. Didn't give us the units. So I don't really know what to label this. You could say unit squared, but same thing. Let's go and divide these two. Negative 32 divided by 2.5. And uh, just as a quick memory jog on this one. Um, uh, well, remember, we, we don't really want any decimals. Really, we don't want any decimals at all, but... Uh, what we can do is, we especially don't want the divisor to have decimals, so we're going to move this over one place value to the right to make it 25. Just if we do that, we got to do it to the negative 32 as well to make it negative 320. I don't really care about the negative because I know that my answer will just be a negative, right? But this makes the division a little bit easier, and you know we may see some remainder, which is going to, with the decimals unit, means that we're going to have to actually... Uh, go into the decimal place value. But since I know my answer is negative, I'm going to take 320 and divide it by 25. Okay, and we can show multiples of 25. 25 is not too bad. 25, 50, 75, 100. Like for those of you that grew up in the generation that had change, uh, 25s aren't too bad, but otherwise, you, you know, having a list like this isn't too bad as well. 150, 175, 200. I'll stop there. Uh, but 30, 25 won't go into 3, but it will go into 32 once. So 1 times 25 is, um, well, 25. So when I subtract there, I get 7. I'll drop the 0 to make that 70. And 25 won't go into 70 evenly. That's because we expect there to be a decimal, so I'll extend this. Uh, but we'll go into 70, let's see, 2 times. 2 times 25 is 50. When I subtract, I get uh, 20. Now the decimal will stay directly above it, right? But I need to drop that 0 from the tenths place value to make this 200. Hey, there it is, right there. It's that one. It's the eighth multiple of 25. So 8 times 25, yeah, that's going to zero out the 200. Nothing remaining. Uh, 12.8. Yeah, so uh, by the way, that means my answer should be negative, though. Negative 12.8. Now let's check with the calculator. Yeah, the calculator confirms that our answer is negative 12.8. So you know what the heck, I'll I'm going to box that in. All right, let's go and multiply this one. Uh, uh, 5.8 times 3.05. So, um, yeah, it, and just doing this by hand, not that you have to do it by hand. But, yeah, for me, I would say, look, how many decimal places do we got from the beginning? Three decimal places overall from both numbers, right? And why do we do that? It's because then we treat it as... 305 times 58, if you're doing, doing it by hand, right? So the 8 times, it, from the 1's place value, 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 8 times 0 is 0, but add the 4 is 4. 8 times 3 is 24, so we get 2,440 from the 8. Now multiplying with the 5 in the 10's place value, so nothing in the 1's. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 0 is 0, but add the 2 makes that 2. 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, we just need to add these two numbers together. 
Uh, and what do we get? 0, 4 plus 5 is 9, 4 plus 2 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, drop the 1. So that's 17,690, but remember that we have 1, 2, 3 decimal places. So this number should also have 3 decimal places. 1, 2, 3 means the decimal goes right between the 7 and 6. And our final answer here, 17.69. Let's just check with the calculator real quick. All right, here's a, this is a subtraction problem. And so for me, I, I remember just going back here, I'd, I'd use keep change change on this one. So I'm going to keep negative 4.6 as negative 4.6. But I'm going to change the operation to from subtraction to addition, which also changes the second number there, negative 44.1, into a positive 44.1. So negative 4.6 plus 44.1. I know I'm doing this by hand. You don't have to. But... Uh, I see that the bigger of the two values is positive, so I know my answer is positive. And then we just take the bigger of the two values, because they're opposite signs, and subtract the smaller of the two, 4.6. So 1 minus 6, I'd have to borrow 1 from the 4. 11 minus 6 is 5. And then 3 minus 4, I'd have to borrow 1 from the 4 as well. 13 minus 4 is 9. Drop the 3. 39.5, that's positive. And so even if I type this in the calculator, I should get the same answer. Yeah, on this one, we're going to add, uh, and, you know, I mean, this is already an addition problem, by the way, so I'm not worried about keep change change stuff because uh, in the past we've only dealt with addition when we deal with negatives, and that's okay. So uh, I just know that my answer is going to be negative because both of these numbers are negative. So I'm going to take these two values, 18.2, and I'm going to add now because I know my answer is negative. 32.83 and yeah I'm, I'm trying to line up the values even though the 18.2 doesn't show a zero in the hundredths place value hundredths place value I can put it there if I want so I'm just adding these together 0 plus 3 is 3 2 plus 8 is 10 carry the 1 1 plus 8 is 9 plus 2 is 11 carry the 1 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5 so that ends up being it's a negative 51 and 3 hundredths and again, the calculator should confirm that for us. And the calculator confirms exactly what we got right there. Let's write this as a decimal. By the way, that's 7 divided by 8. And it's, instead of showing it as just 7 divided by 8, I mean, I am, but I'm going to use long division on this one. And can't we just use a calculator? Yeah, I'm just not going to until I've actually done this by hand, right? So it's long division, and I'm going to make that 7.0. Why? Because 8 won't go into 7. It's too small. See, I don't forget to bring your decimal up right there. It should match. So I'm now looking at 8. How many times does it go into 70? That's different. It will go into 70 8 times. 8 times 8 is 64. When I subtract here, I get 6 remaining, right? That's 10 minus 4. 6 minus 6 zeros out, which means I need even another 0 here. And I'll, I'll extend this line. I don't know how many we're going to need, but that should be hopefully good. Let's make that 60. Okay, well, it won't go into 60 exactly, but it will go into 67 times. 7 times 8 is 56. There, see that? So when I subtract it, I get 4, 10 minus 6. I'll borrow from the 6 there. So I do need another 0, and that should be the last one I need because that's 40. 8 will go into 40 exactly 5 times. So yeah, subtract the 4. You got nothing remaining there. Uh, but that decimal, that's what it wanted from the beginning. That is the value we want, 0 0.875. And I know we've talked about this before, but uh, whether you put the 0 there in the beginning or not, doesn't matter. You can put 0 0.875 or just 0 0.875, and the, uh, the, the homework should give you the end. It should give you full credit for that. There we go. Changing a fraction to lowest terms. Now, remember, for this one, we just write, remember this as words, which we're going to get to as well. This, this reads as 35, there's the hyphen, by the way, 35. And the 5 in the, the farthest to the right is in the hundredths place value, so that's hundredths. Don't forget the TH right there. Oh, hundredths, there we go. It, uh, spell check me. 35 hundredths, right? So that's, that's actually what the fraction is, is 35 over 100 like this. And then I would see that these are both divisible by 5, just to simplify, because you should always simplify. It did say in the lowest terms, so this ends up being 7 over 20.
Remember, the calculator will do this for us. If you just type in 0.35, you can push enter if you need to, but just push the double arrow button above it. And not only will it show you as a fraction, but it's already simplified. And yeah, my calculator is showing 7 over 20, so that's good. All right, rounding this to the nearest thousandth. Let's go and do that. Let's identify where the thousandth place value is. And as far as I know, I mean, the calculator, by the way, will round for you, but the process to make it programmed to do that is a little bit long. If we could just figure out the rounding, then this is better, okay? So the seven is in tenths, the zero is in the hundredths, the eight, the first eight here is in the thousandths place value. So remember, we look to the place value immediately to the right, that's an eight. If it's five or more, we need to add one to the target place value. And this is eight, so it's more than five, five or more rather. So yeah, I need to add one to the eight in the thousandths place value. Eight plus one is nine. So there's nothing to really carry over with the uh, seven and the zero. And yeah, we pretty much ignore everything else to the right. You could say it becomes zeros if you'd like, but round it to the nearest thousandth. I can do a better box than that, but uh, 709 thousandths is how that would read. Oh, this one, I, I know it's kind of long right there. 988 and 64 ten thousandths. And remember, one of the key words here is the word and. That's where the decimal will be. So to the, to the left, we got 988. That's pretty direct. There's a 9 in the hundreds and 8 in the tens, 80. And then another 8 in the ones, 988. And, so that's our decimal. But then it says it's 64 ten thousandths, right? Now you can write 64, which is fine, and I'm giving myself a little space between the decimal, not just because I know it, because some, I usually will require some kind of place value between. Okay, so that means the four, as far to the right, needs to be in the 10,000th place value. So how many place values is that? Well, to the right of the decimal, you'd have tenths, tenths, then hundredths, then thousandths, and then ten thousandths. That's where the four is. And any empty place values that we see like this one, you just tack in zeros to hold those place values. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're done. So on this one, yeah, same idea. It's just kind of backwards from what we did on the last one. Uh, any of the empty place values, we essentially ignore just like we would with whole values on this one. So I would look at uh, the 7 and the 1 there and just type it in as, uh, well, 71. Just remember that it needs to be hyphenated right there. 71. I think I spelled 70, right? So that's the number, but now we have to just declare the place value of the number furthest to the right. And, uh, yeah, that's in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So thousandths. Don't forget your TH on that. Um, but, yeah, that... That would be it right there. 71 thousandths. All right, consider this number. What is that? Uh, 421,800. Let me try that again. 421,785. And that would be 6,939 ten thousandths. It does have a zero there on the, on the tail end of that. It's just not really necessary that it's there because it's part of the decimal value, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that right now. Uh, determine the place value of these given digits. Let's make this a little bigger for us. Uh, oh, the zero. So I, I apologize. We do need that zero. Let's see if I can bring that back. There it is. All right. Well, <laughs> even though it's on the tail end of that, I thought we were going to have to actually write the number out in words, but we need that zero right there. What place value is that? Well... The, the decimal is important. We need to identify the decimal. There it is. So the six there would be in the tenths, the nine in the hundredths, the three in the thousandths, nine in the ten thousandths, which means that zero is in the hundred thousandths. And that's in thousandths. The TH. Hopefully I can spell this right. Thousands. There we go. I think I did pretty good on that. Uh, next up, we got the five. All right, the five is just one place value to the left of the decimal. That's the ones, not the ones. Ones place value. 
Oh, and then the six. Yeah, we've already identified that place value. That is the tenths. Tenths. Yeah, that's uh, that's all those. And, you know, I mean, usually on the review, it only asks for, like, these three. You know, maybe it asks for more, though, like the sevens and the hundredths. And uh, they, they probably won't ask for nines because there's two of them, but, you know, maybe the three. That three we've already identified. That was the thousandths place value. But for the three that it wanted, this will do.